Not again. That's the last time I share pedals with Michael Bloody Levy. If we go back to the mid 2010s, there were two things that I wasn't only against, but absolutely and steadfastly opposed to. Firstly, Peaky Blinders, which managed to isolate the bad haircuts and weird accents of UK culture and export them to the world, and clipless pedals. And they just weren't for me, the pedals that is, I mean, I never came around to the series. But in the meantime, I started skiing. Now, skiing gives you something that mountain biking just can't. And that's a pole in each hand to beat back children as you pizza your way into oblivion on the magic carpet run with little to no control. Now, once I did get into my skiing, I started to really enjoy that feeling of direct connection to my equipment that previously I hadn't. And that's something I wanted to take back to mountain biking. In the time since I came back SPD positive, I've tried varying systems. Now, I grew up on the road bike, so for me, getting in and out wasn't necessarily the problem, but rather I was on the hunt for a feeling of support in one of the rare occasions that I ever actually drove my weight through the bike instead of wildly understeering through the apex of turns. Now, some people like that distinctive in, out, on, off, cut and shut feel of the Shimano system, which should also be noted for its excellent reliability. But some people, myself included, prefer the adjustability and floaty feel of Crank Brothers. Now, to say the Shimano system doesn't have any adjustability would of course be untrue. It does have a tension adjust to the mechanism at the back there. And it also can be adjusted further by two different cleats. You have the SH-51 that has one direction of release or the SH-56, which has multiple. Crank Brothers do of course also offer multiple cleats that can vary the angle of release plus the degree of float. And across their range, I would argue, they offer more platform styles to give differing amounts of support at the interface between the sole of the shoe and the pedal. There are, of course, bigger platform Shimano pedals, but these, to me at least, feel less about differing levels of support when clipped in, and more about a larger platform when you're not clipped in, but want some security when you're resting your foot upon the pedal. This level of support when clipped in is something the Crank Brothers system does really well. If we use the Mallet DH as an example, you'll see what I mean. It's slightly concave, so the wings of the pedal actually sit slightly higher than the center, meaning that there's loads of support on the sole of the shoe when you are clipped in. Before I go any further, I just want to be really open and explain what I want in a clipless pedal system. Now, all reviews are inherently subjective, and the way to provide clarity and parity is not to ignore this, but to acknowledge it. That should hopefully empower you with more knowledge when you come to buy your next clipless pedal. I have tended to prefer the Crank Brothers system in the past, but I do have a slightly peculiar setup. Firstly, I like my pins wound all the way so they're flush within the pedal. And secondly, I like to have my cleat pointed towards my big toe. That's not only to make it easier to unclip, but when I'm driving my weight towards the bike, it gives me a large amount of float to drive into and I don't pop out the mechanism. I also prefer to feel my weight going through the sole of the shoe and onto the pedal platform. And I don't really enjoy the sensation that feels like metal on metal as you rest on the axle or the mechanism of the pedal itself. This is something I don't particularly enjoy, but of course there are a lot of people that do. You see, the Shimano system is massively popular and it's why I'm referencing it so much in a review that's about a different brand entirely. It's to give you a point of reference. One thing the Crank Brothers lineup didn't have though was a real rival for something like the XT or XTR trail pedal, something lightweight. You see, they do have the candy and the egg beater, but you could argue those are better lined up and squared up for XC or gravel or cyclocross and not lightweight trail riding. So what's their answer? Well, it is this. This is a pedal that aims to bring the Mallet lineage to a trail platform. And you guessed it, it's called the Mallet Trail. I imagine they've done this for a couple of reasons. 
When plugging a gap in the range, it made sense to lean on the recognized and embraced branding of the Mallet platform instead of something like the Candy Enduro. So within the context of Crank Brothers branding and their nomenclature, who I believe was a cabaret singer in the 1930s, it certainly makes a lot of sense. Secondly, because each system requires its own specific cleat, I can imagine Crank Brothers were quite reluctant to lose more weight skeptical riders to the Shimano system, and they wanted to cover off that eventuality by providing a lighter pedal that still uses the same Crank Brothers cleat. So let's look at the pedal itself. Now obviously it's a smaller, lighter platform than the Mallet Enduro, and it weighs 178 grams compared to the 198 grams of the XTR Trail. For reference, the Shimano Saint weighs 278 grams. So the downhill pedal is far more substantial than these lighter weight trail numbers. The pedals use Crank Brothers longer 57 mil spindle and they have that egg beater in the middle which you'll recognize for its four sided entry. The pedals come with a five year warranty. You see, I hate the thought of running special cleats for special shoes, then you've got special shoes for special bikes. It seems like a load of nonsense to me. Personally, I wanna stay with one cleat system across all of my bikes. But the biggest problem with the Mallet Trails is they are squarely in the shadow of its bigger, and in my opinion, better sibling. It's merely 40 grams lighter than the Mallet Enduro and does without a lot of what makes this pedal so good, namely that concave platform. What that means is you may well have to run the thicker two millimeter traction pads and that in turn preloads the underside of that cleat mechanism, meaning that getting out isn't so easy. All of that, and you might not even get the support that you wanted in the first place. You can of course see these traction pins, which are great for moments of wide-eyed panic as you paddle on the pedal, hoping to get a bit of security whilst going through something unclipped. But once you're actually into the mechanism, these pins can sit on some shoes inside that cleat channel, meaning they don't even bite into the rubber to support your foot more in the first place. It also then doesn't give you that binary in-out feeling of the Shimano. Although I would say the two mil traction pads on the Mallet Trail offer a comparative level of support to something like the XTR Trail. A funny little tidbit though, is once you're riding in the wet with a bit, with a bit of moisture, <laughs> with a bit of moisture, on the <laughs> once you get some moisture on these two mil traction pads, should you have them installed, they actually make it a lot easier to get in and out of. So riding these pedals in the wet does feel distinctly different to in the dry. If you go hunting for more support, and do fit those thicker two mil traction pads, it can also mean there are times where you think you're clipped in, but the mechanism hasn't quite gone over the edge of the cleat. Now, this can be remedied with Crank Brothers shoes because you can change the 1.5 mil stock shim that sits underneath the cleat to the supplied one millimeter version. However, not all shoes have this option. So, let's put myself in your shoes. You're about to buy a brand new clipless pedal and you're choosing between the Mallet Trail and the Shimano Trail, so the XTR or the XT. What would I choose? To be honest, I'd go for the Shimanos, but if I was going to choose between the Shimanos and the Mallet Enduro, what would I choose? Well, for an additional 20 grams, it would be the Mallet Enduros every day of the week. The Mallet Trail is just a victim <laughs> of what an excellent pedal the Mallet Enduro is. You know, if you were specking up a really light XC bike or a trail bike where you were really focusing on weight, maybe even doing some gravel riding or something, this pedal, it's not half bad. But if you're riding techier trails where you're driving through the bike, where you're conscious of being able to get in and out again easily, as well as having moments of support when you're not clipped in, but you're trying to get back in, these ones are definitely the ones to go for. These aren't bad pedals, but compared to the established standard of the Mallet Enduro, they're always going to suffer. As we go forward, Pinkbike is gonna be doing more video reviews, but if you wanna see the high definition images, as well as the written article, be sure to check out the Pinkbike website. 
Thank you very much for listening to me waffle on and see you on the slope soon. I'll be there, poles in hand. Thanks guys, and I'll catch you next time.